Welcome to the Kawartha Small Business Podcast, where we believe the Kawarthas can be the most thriving region in Canada for small business. I'm Brian Rump from Profit Coach. And I'm Matt Gary of Managey Digital. And we are recording from the Thrive Podcast Studio at Thrive Coworking Community at 18 Kent Street West in downtown uh, Lindsay. And with us today, we have Tim and Chris of the Tim and Chris Empire. And uh, yeah, tell us about Tim and Chris. Oh, well, they asked to jump in. <laughs> oh, Tim and Chris. Um, yeah, uh, we have forty-five minutes today. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. No, but we. Uh, this is a therapy session, correct? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, Chris and I uh, moved to uh, moved to what was our cottage uh, outside of Finland Falls. Uh, eight I, years I was ago. I was duped to moving. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's how it usually works. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. move to the cottage, um, and uh, we we opened uh, we opened home by Tim and Chris in Fenland Falls uh, in our in our first location. Uh, kind of jumped in with some friends who also needed to uh, start businesses, so we had a massage studio and an upholster uh, working out of the same building. And uh, then we decided that an art gallery was uh, something that was you know which was a nicer thing to have on the street than our uh, than our studio so uh, we opened the art gallery uh then over uh covid uh we we bought uh we bought the buildings that the uh, court store was in and uh moved ourselves down there the upholsterer moved off and got her uh, got her own space now yeah her own space and, and has grown her business and, and massage therapist and bought her and, and has her building with 13 practitioners. Oh, wow. so, yeah. Yeah. Everyone, yeah, everyone's so, growing. Yeah. All the businesses grew, grew out of that first space and, uh, have, uh, have now gone into, gone into Felon. And then, and then we opened room by Tim and Chris, the furniture and textile store two months ago now. Yeah. I'm um, having our grand opening on September 30th. Um, and, uh, and then Tim's been working hard at the Grove. <laughs> my sweet little volunteer side gig at the Grove yes. Theater uh, that uh, keeps me a little busy as well. So yeah, how did the Grove come about? Oh gosh, it was a uh, there was there was a number of conversations, but it really ended up happening at the um, at a downtown revitalization meeting uh, for Fenlon Falls and uh, someone I can't remember who said, you know, wouldn't it be great to have you know, a, a live, wouldn't it be great to have theater back in, back in Fenland Falls? And uh, I had enough wine by that point. I kind of put up my hand and I'm like, ah, oh, we can do that. Um, so we, you know, we found the space and worked with the uh, Agricultural Society who runs the, the fairgrounds up in Fenland and uh, uh, found the space and applied for a grant. And I really thought that was it. I thought that was going to be it. We could wash our hands of it. We had done our little thing for uh, downtown revitalization, and then we got the grant. Um, and it was just a moment of, oh, my God, now we have to do this. Uh, and but it was during COVID, and, and it was really neat because, well, I guess it was, um, unfortunately, there was a lot of out-of-work theater people. Mm. Oh, and, yeah. And so we got, so we got like, the, the woman who, who does the... We got we got we got very professional people yeah. to help us mm -hmm. who would not have set foot in Fenland Falls, mm -hmm. uh, and so the theater came a bit quite professionally, as opposed to just what what were we thinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It really took on a life of its own because of the uh, because of the pandemic, and uh, yeah, and then, I mean, this year was this, this summer was incredible. You know, selling out show after show, and uh, just great great productions which i have very little to do with uh well, you know, sure. i'm not what's putting i'm not what's putting the talent on stage we've got an amazing team that's doing that and it's so incredibly good so i have no problem bragging about how good the shows are because someone else does it um <laughs> well and sean and christy who were tim's co-founders mm. like they same story christy christy grew up cottaging here and, mm. uh, and, and and wanted a reason to be back and, and here it is, and here it is, and now they're back. You know, back. Yeah, yeah, it's so amazing, and um, you know, we shout out the Grove quite often on this podcast, mm -hmm. and Fenland Falls, um, which I'm highly biased towards <laughs> as well, being uh, also hoodwinked 
previously to move to Finland and where we worked there and uh, on the chamber for many years and downtown revitalization. And we heard so many people had the idea about theater. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you had all that wine that night and then actually made it happen from something that people have been talking about over and over. Uh, one time when I was on the chamber, we had someone reach out who wanted to invest in like a theater project. They wanted to meet the chamber. Turned out they didn't really have any money. They just had a big idea that they wanted somebody else to yeah. execute. But it was like, you know, building a, another giant theater. So to have the Grove now exist is just an awesome project. It's, it's, and, it, and it sells out. Yeah. yeah. And it's the entire yeah. community, right? Like, yeah, I do a lot of work and I hang out, but it's not my theater, right? It's, it's, it's it, it, the entire community and so many people and the horticultural society with all the plantings and everything else. So many people have left their mark in and on that space and, and uh, continue to, and continue to. And it's yeah. just, it's just, it's just, it's going to be so fantastic. I keep telling people, you know, Stratford, Ontario was a lovely little farming town yeah. and somebody put up a tent and started doing theater in it. There's no reason our trajectory could not be similar. So uh, big dreams, big dreams for what that'll become. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. All right, back to your empire. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about that some more. So okay. We're we're a team of thirteen now. Wow, is that right? Yeah, yeah, thirteen. Um, yeah, and we uh, we design commercial spaces, resident residential spaces, homes, cottages. Um, but we spend our day with a, a, a cool team of people, um, just thinking of great things and putting together great drawings and um, working working with some fun people and building some really nice stuff. Yeah, you know, it's great. Yeah, in the hard days. So we get we take the dogs to work, uh, which is one of the best parts. <laughs> um, it's the little things in life. But no, we've we've created this little space that is a very um, community minded, uh, quite artistic. Um, it's a very comfortable space to to work out of and for people to come gather in. And, uh... Were you doing home in Toronto? Like, had you opened the interior design place? We've done. So we've been working in the milieu, not not a not a bricks and mortar storefront sure. sort of setup. But we were we were doing the same work. Uh, but but no, I mean, really, home by Tim and Chris is 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 a is a is a is a Korth link. It really and, came out of moving to yeah. go to the Korthas. And, and when we opened our doors, we we sort of we hung out a shingle and said, "Home by Tim and Chris," and they had a lovely logo and. Design new, renew, and um, and we had no idea what what the market needed, not a clue. And so we just let people stay, we just let people ask and sort of guide us in the direction that was necessary, and then and then just sort of get familiar with that, and um, and then and then there's enough business, and you start guiding guiding the direction you want to be in. And um, now we're now we're taking on jobs that we can be part of. I love that. I'm gonna. Uh dig in a bit tell me when you first opened what were your thoughts or what what would you have predicted five years ahead would have looked like well so i mean we folks and i are quite familiar with building ourselves right like we can we can we could build you a house uh, with our own hands um we, we can also design your house um and so when we came up here, we, we thought that the market was starting to heat up a little bit, and that we weren't the only people that making this decision to move to move to the country. And I think we sort of thought building would be kind of the focus, maybe. Um, but we we always said that we were going to let the market determine mm -hmm. what the business was. Mm -hmm. and I really think that's what we've done. That's like, yeah. Uh -huh. Just you know, let's let's. Let's see how this goes. Uh, well, and it's how room it came about. Um, we uh, we have we don't have a style per se, but we have we have a um, we have a certain uh, level of uh, level of furniture and textiles and things like that we put into a client's home, and um, and we were starting to reach our limits of being able to 
go to Toronto and take a client shopping and come back and design, and that was taking up a lot of our time. Um, we still do that, but now we've brought a whole bunch of that furniture, which we would happily spec in anyone's home and have many times, and now it's here. And yeah, lots of just, our lots of our favorite things that you know we would have in our house or we would be specking for clients' homes, and now it's all available here in the court. That's like that's yeah, that's a big difference for us. And you never had a plan for a room or a thought of hey, I want to open this curated furniture store anymore. So just kind of came about. I'm sorry, what's a plan? <laughs> no, but but, it, but reflecting on it, the plan is just what it was. It it continues to be. Let the market decide what we need. Mm -hmm. Is why we have an art gallery, and it, and it sort of ended up being that we're bringing the things that we love, mm -hmm. um, and and introducing those to people, and it's when you can get passionate about something and and, and really just talk to someone about something, not have to sell them on it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's when, that's when a business really works. Yeah, I think that's what I really like about it because a lot of the people we talk to and common story is you know. We moved to the small town to open our dream this. And yes. people have this vision of what they want and then kind of try to make that happen. Uh, the way you've done it where you approach, let the market decide, but also follow your kind of core values and things you like and what you want, I think yeah. is just such a, it's a refreshing kind of fundamentally sound way to run a business. Uh, we just, I don't know if we've, had anyone else tell us that on this podcast? Oh, well, I love it. Well, I, I remember <laughs> when I called when I called TD to get a Visa machine, and the, the person on the other end of the line kept asking me questions. She says, "Well, what does it say in your business plan about this?" And I'm like, "Oh God, we're supposed to have a business plan before I call." Yeah, so which is funny. We one of our ongoing jokes is that you you know I think. As someone who's written a lot of business plans, they're highly overrated. You need some level of planning and there's some truths you need to yeah. be aware of. But in terms of sitting and writing you know, plans like that, it's so rare. Mm -hmm. When I was at the bank lending money to businesses, the ones who kind of got the money and were most successful never, ever had a Plan. Like I had to tease it out of them because sure. they kind of knew <laughs> they could answer the questions, <laughs> but like, yeah, it wasn't written down. So yeah, sometimes yeah. you need to just kind of follow the money and follow what you're interested in. Well, and then we get to narrow it down even further, right? So, so now it's not just designing cottages, it's mm -hmm. just designing buildings. Now it's sustainably designing, and and how do we introduce materials that are uh, that are good for the environment, and good for our clients, and and, and be respectful and full of I don't know, accessibility of, mm. um, of, of we, we get to we get to drill it down in even even more detail. Well, I think room is a really good example of that, right? The the focus on Canadian mm. yeah, Canadian, you know, Canadian, Canadian products, Canadian focus. Focus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's that's that's a it's a value of ours that we are going to bring into into that, right? Things are not made offshore. Things are not hacked together. This is this is. But it's also been intentional been, stuff. It's also it's, been quite eye opening in mm -hmm. in finding the product for room and and really getting to understand how things are made and where they're made and why they're made there. And so, Canada has a, has has a manufacturing side to it, but we don't manufacture a lot of home goods here. Um, and we certainly don't manufacture all the pieces for home goods here. Mm. Um, the amount of Canadian manufacturers who a lot of the parts come from China. Mm. Um, and they come from China because that, that can work there. Um, and, uh, and a lot of sustainable products are, uh, are done in countries like Mexico and, and, and China and um, Malaysia. Uh, I, I just kind of kind of everywhere mm -hmm. um, and it's because they have the facilities there to do it so we aren't transferring things across the ocean a few times um, no it's been it's been quite enlightening to to really understand what sustainable is and what uh, what a canadian made product is mm -hmm. yeah. what's a product that you've come across maybe in the last few weeks that's just been really exciting or something maybe new that you've learned that you had to like run it, tell, tell everyone about it. Well, so really exciting. Part of, part of Room uh, is going to uh, branch off into, we're calling it Studio TC. So it's 
Uh, it's products made specifically for us or white labeled for us from manufacturers. And so one of the things I'm really excited about is there's a, a Canadian um, manufacturer. So fabrics come from uh, Portugal um, and some of them are produced in Portugal. Some of them are produced in uh, put together in Vancouver, um, but uh, it's called Oli and it's a, it's been a brand for 40 some odd years uh, who make sheets and towels and we've done a white label with them under Studio TC and so um, at the end of this month just in time for the opening we'll have uh, mm -hmm. our Studio TC percale sheets and, and things like that and I'm, I, I don't know it's just something it's something we've used uh, and, and had the experience with and, and now it's labeled for us so and for those of us who don't know what percale is, that's just really, really nice sheets. <laughs> well, really, really nice sheets at a price point that people can actually go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not, not linen sheets at uh, at eleven hundred dollars a set. It's yeah, four hundred dollars a set for uh, yeah. Yeah, it's really exciting. One of my financial life hacks is to surround yourself with good fabrics. So if you buy really nice sheets and towels. If you're on a budget and you know can't afford to design the new house or the new cottage, you yep. can live in luxury with yep. nice sheets and nice towels. Yeah, no, yeah, that you're not going to ever have to replace yeah. next year. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that tactile experience is really important to the and, and, and like you said, a luxury. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know Brian for three or four years, and I just recently found out. Yeah, he's a big towel guy. Yeah, expensive towels is the way to his heart. Is yes. the way to my heart. <laughs> okay. And that used to be. I grew up not even knowing that you could actually buy new towels because we only had towels that were like my parents' wedding gifts, mm -hmm. and they were like would like split apart when you'd be drying yourself. <laughs> then I discovered new luxury towels, and um, well, yeah, you can get towels that are like really specific to where you are and what you're using them for, right? Yeah. Yeah, the the uh, the outdoor towel is designed to dry quickly and not <laughs> not too thick because they get soaked and you know all these little things. Were you always so entrepreneurial? He's a serial entrepreneur. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It's always been it's always been there. Um, there's been a few a, a few small businesses, um, and 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 then and then there was a desire to work for someone else and. And that wasn't really, I couldn't, I couldn't get into it. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't really get into it. Um, I had trained to be an accountant mm. um, and, 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 and tried that and pursued that and started my own business doing that and oh, wow. did, did pretty well with it. Um, but it just wasn't, we, we had, we had to redesign our house and that was, that was where my head was. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. When Chris and I met, we, we dated long distance for a while, and then he moved to Calgary, where I was, into a 535 square foot condo. Oh God! And we're two pretty big boys for uh, <laughs> such a little space. So we just we went to our real estate agent and asked her to find us the largest, <laughs> ugliest condo she could. Um, <laughs> and she took us to this place, and we're looking around, you know, eyes as big as dinner plates, she, saying, she's all the things we can do with this. She's in the corner, crossed arms, and just saying, I don't want to touch anything. I don't want to look. It had gold cherub um, <laughs> toilet paper holders. Um, and, and, and carpet. And carpet in the bathroom. <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> like a shag. It was a shag carpet in the bathrooms. And we, 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 you know, we, we said, great, okay, we'll, 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 we'll take this. And I mean, Chris kind of was still doing counting at the time. And, and I was, I was running the concert hall in Calgary. Ooh. And uh, was still so cool. you're still in school. Yeah. 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 So we would, <laughs> so we would, uh, so we would spend evenings and weekends, much to our neighbor's chagrin, um, doing projects and, and, Cleaning up and making the space better. We had a we had a little uh, Ford Wrangler, 
right? You know, a Ford Ranger. A Ford Ranger, like tiny little With truck. A suicide door. Tiny yeah, truck. Truck. And, oh, yeah. And, and a shopping cart to bring things down from the fifth floor in the elevator down to our down to our truck and throw them in the back of the truck. And that's how we that's how we renovated for years and years until we ended up moving and, and starting uh, the first couple of houses and stuff. Well, we've always been practical. I, I started school in Victoria and met Tim. Um, and he was in Calgary and into his into his career, and so I moved to Calgary uh, and transferred transfer school. And I wanted I, I needed I wanted to have a, a part time job, uh, and and so we sort of sat down at the dinner table and said, what what's the thing that we're missing that I should do to to sort of um, get a discount on or, or or benefit us some way? And we didn't have a car, and so I went and worked at budget. Because uh, then we had a car whenever we wanted. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> so we had a car every weekend, so we go to the mountains and go hiking. But we've always been <laughs> we've always been practical in that in that in that respect of uh, just uh, we aren't always the ones determining things. Our, our lives are often determining things. So. Yeah. And when did design become the passion then? That really happened like twelve. 13 years ago. I think so. Yeah, we were in Toronto. I was at uh, Canadian Stage, and <laughs> Chris had kind of wrapped up, or was in the was process just, of wrapping was, up his I was down to two, I was down to two clients. You know, yeah. We, we, we lived in Ottawa, um, and I was down to two clients. And, um, and I mean, it was Toronto, and we, 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 we bought in the best place we could for what we could, for what we could afford, and it was fine. Um, and so we decided to renovate it and, um, and make it for us. So, um, yeah, and that <laughs> evenings, yeah. weekends, that was a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, but that's when I really, that's when it really became, okay, this is, this is what I want to be doing. And, um, I remember yeah. one March, it was right around St. Patrick's Day and it must have been minus a gazillion out and, uh, we had gutted the upstairs of the house, and Chris was away in Ottawa for one of his uh, one of his accounting clients, and I was by myself, freezing in the bed upstairs because there was no insulation in the walls. And then we had left the shower, but had just put <laughs> plastic around the shower. So I got into the shower to try to warm up, but it turned into a hot air balloon and it just kept expanding and expanding out. So you can imagine this entire room taken over by uh, this plastic shower bubble that I was trying to stay warm in while I was in a house with no heat by myself uh, in the middle of winter. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we were our first clients uh, and, and, and that's, and it just, it kind of, it kind of went from there. And, uh, and when we came here, that was, naturally what we were going to do. I mean, we, we, that was, that was the passion. That's what we were going to bring to, bring to court the legs. And, and it's just kind of, kind of run from there. Um, and now we, now we sit here and, um, and our, and our, our books are really full and, and we have, we have a great business pipeline and a uh, great team. And and just amazing. Everything's, just, everything's built up around us. We've gone. It's been, it's been awesome. And being part of the, the Fenlon, uh, business community has been incredible too i yeah. you know i i the 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 group of people who are driving that community forward from the from the business perspective now are really amazing and great to be a great to be a part of so what yeah. makes that business community so special honestly when i left the i, I left the chamber board so that i could you know, concentrate my mm -hmm. volunteer efforts on the Grove Theater. Um, but when I left that board, I was the second oldest member. There are only two men on that board. Mm -hmm. And it is, you know, what was, was a real old boys club in a small town is now young entrepreneurial women who are driving the driving the economy, driving the community of Fenland Falls forward. And I just find it Fantastic! I'm so excited. Um, it's amazing the amount of people who who cheer us, who cheer each other on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it was it was it was probably the biggest surprise moving here. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in hindsight, I shouldn't have been surprised, um, but we'd spent so many years of cottaging here and not really experiencing Port Lakes that immersing ourselves into it, uh, we we realized that 
yeah, these businesses, they, they, they really, they contribute to each other and they, and they, and they encourage each other and, mm -hmm. and, and having that sort of growth outlook, um, it really, it really makes people excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so exciting. It's so rare yeah. as well. And uh, there was a time in, you know, when I started working in Fenland, the chamber was very disconnected from who was actually running the businesses sure. um, and yeah, the old boys club and, yeah. Lots of stories around that. So to watch it transform and be representative of who is on the ground yeah. running mm -hmm. businesses, it's so exciting. Um, and I don't think it's that common for a lot of business communities. It's what everyone wants. Yeah. But it's a special thing. Yeah. It's a special thing because the people are stepping up. And, they're, and, they're, and, they're, and the folks who are coming there and opening businesses are really, really making a conscious choice that that is what they want to do where they want to do it and i just i think that that's so awesome it's so great to be a part of yeah, it really is it makes it easy to get out of it every day <laughs> yeah back to room um brian and me were at a meeting a couple weeks ago now with a, a couple lawyers in town and your name came up in room and angus is one of the guy's names and he's like what's this room place and I was like all excited to like put my chest out. Like, well, actually, I know a lot about it. And then the other lawyer in the room, Heather, piped in right away and was like, "I forget how it started, but it ended with this beautiful marketing tagline that I was like, Thank you for that one. Yeah, she was like, "I think the whole idea is that you visit the Kawarthas and then you make it your life." And I was like. Yes, you know, I just thought it was brilliant. And I was like, I was getting goosebumps just there. <laughs> well, we, we were in a meet, and we were in a meeting, um, and, and one of the things that's come from you is is that course lifestyle. Mm. Um, and and we were in a meeting, and, and, and it's like, uh, and, and someone who's going to bring something big, big to the courses, and 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 we I used the course lifestyle. She's like, that's it, that's that's what this is. I sort of encapsulated it all. And, um, I just thought it was like an amazing compliment already to a business that's barely been open. And sure. if someone was able to walk in and know what this was all about, I just thought it was incredible. <laughs> we, we did take the signs off the uh, off the windows that said, sort of kind of open now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the other option for that line was going to be another half-baked idea brought to you by Tim and Chris. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll get signs and all of that be grown up. Business eventually, but, but yeah. another idea by Tim and Chris brought to you by a dock and a bottle of wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Go on. When Tim has too much wine, we get new <laughs> things in Fenland. It's not too much wine; it's an appropriate amount of wine. It's Clearly. an inspiring amount Clearly. of wine. Yes, we were talking about we were talking about, uh, we were talking about um, another possible project in in oh, Fenland, gosh, of course. Yeah. And, and I was just. And, and as, we're as we're talking about it, I'm thinking, no, <laughs> no, I, 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 like, but let's let's just get let's get our feet uh, let our feet settled and uh, and go from there. <laughs> it's hard though. I'm driving around with my wife. I don't say her name much on the podcast, but my wife Meg, as you know her. Yeah. But I forget what came up, and she was basically like. Well, like, do you have any other business ideas that you want to get to? I just, <laughs> I just lied. I was like, no. I was like, I can make three to five right yeah, now. Yeah, That's exactly. like, no sense to do, but I would love to. Some well, of those are that, ones I'm sworn to not let you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure enough. I think that's yeah. one of the things about being in being in these smaller communities, especially as the communities are growing and changing again so much, brought on by the pandemic as well, is that you know you just you look around. It's very easy to look around and go, you know what this town's missing? Yeah. You know what this town needs, and you know what, man. They aren't all good business ideas. No. But it doesn't mean they're not bad ideas for the community. Right? Exactly. And, exactly. and you know, it's it that that to me is a big part of where my brain goes with if you're kind of asking the question of what's next, yeah. it's the, you know, there there are things that the community needs. And yeah. and well and, and this morning we were in a meeting with someone. Yes. Uh, and and so there is a there is a, a business that she would like to buy. Um, and it's a good idea. And then we were like, and then you can do this with it. 
Yeah. And and here's your this, 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 <laughs> this. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it's really easy to look in and, and, and notice what's missing. Yeah, and just but there's only so many hours in the day. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or Brian, so Brian will always say, like he just wants it to exist. So like it's, like Tim just said, it might not be the most profitable business idea, but like man, that'd be really cool if that existed. And you I can come to me and I can like maybe help someone else figure out how you make it profitable to what you want to do. That's kind of. But if you if you look at what, what, what we've done, and we've been totally selfish. About Right. Yeah. What 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 do we want? We want good design. What do we want? We want we want great art. What do we want we want great furniture. What do we, we want it? We now. want we want theater, right? Like we're mm-hmm. we're just we're participating in things we're passionate about. Yes. Um and, and that we want to and that we want to bring to the community because it's it's a big part of our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that I think the community is full of quite like minded people. And, yeah. Mary Lee at the chamber says that hanging out with me is like being inside of a popcorn machine. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, new idea, <laughs> new idea. How about this? How about that? Um, but yeah, I, I think I think after this summer in the Grove, and, and this is a, this is a growing year, and God, did they ever get along as a team? Like, like, and they just like, they work so well together. Um, but Tim spent a lot of time at it, and he yeah. were, he burnt out. I am so burnt out. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Are you taking time off? He did a great job. I had lots of great nights. Me too. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I had some great nights at the theater too, but yeah, I can barely stay awake day to day at the moment. So yeah, my favorite thing is um, Meg came to the theater. Yeah, just kind of, sort of happenstance a little bit, mm-hmm. and then she couldn't stop going. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, like the she went four times. I yeah, think. I forget what one you brought her to. The first one, the cabaret yeah, one, which and was like she was like, "This is great," but the experience in the theater. And then she's like, I gotta go back. And then I went. She's your permanent date. Yeah. 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 And then her and I went to the Shakespeare one on a Friday night. And then Tim had kind of suggested we gotta come back Sunday. And then it was in her, like, she had such a great time yeah. that she's like, we gotta go. I couldn't because it's like with the kids. So, anyways, yeah. she went with her friend and then she's back like a couple weeks ago. And I've only been the one time and I'm not a theater guy. I like seeing theater, I like music, I would love stand up. Yeah, I would enjoy that. But the whole experience of this, giving me goosebumps again, uh, like just being there. As soon as you pull out of the parking lot, you know, like you see the path, you're like, holy moly, like, I don't care if you like theater or what you like, you have to go experience it. When Jim Cuddy was playing, so his violinist, Anna Lindsay, oh, she, yeah. she's on the stage and, and she's, 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 she's exceptional. Uh, and it was such an intimate moment with, with, with Jim Cuddy. But you could see her when she wasn't playing. She's just sort of looking yeah. off into the forest, <laughs> looking up, and just totally. You can see the what I, I love. The artists love the stage. Yeah, like uh, Anne Lindsay's one of my all-time favorite fiddle players, and I actually didn't pay attention enough. I didn't know it was going to be like yeah that she was going to be there. So mm-hmm. it was like a special treat to have her there. But yeah, but her they were facial expression and just like. I've noticed almost all of the artists do that. Like that's kind of why you get into performing arts sure. is to be able to come to a venue like that and well, put when you're, a show. When you're down on the stage there, you know, you're watching, you're typically watching the moon rise through the show. Oh, wow. Because that's where, you know, oh, that's wow. the way that they're facing. But then there's now also the eagle, which is on top of the story poles, the, the totem poles that are in the space. And that eagle sits over the audience and is looking down at the stage. And, you know, there's there's a lot of really neat things there. And as you say, the number of folks who come in there for the first time, maybe with a little bit of an arm twist, you know, to, to, to get them there. And then are just coming back time after time and really enjoy it and it's it's it just it just goes to prove what uh you know what yeah. that you can build it and they will come yeah right but, it, but it's like the gallery in our office right mm-hmm. sure okay. I, 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 yeah. maybe maybe it's an unexpected space in in mm-hmm. felon falls and people come in and they're always a little intimidated um, they come in they just wow where am i I've been transported somewhere um and then they come back and then they come back and they mm-hmm. come back and they, they see that new show and a new show. And, yeah. And then they want to see the office. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's just. It's the other um, I'll comment too, that the combination of room and the gallery is like this 
probably completely accidental, brilliant marketing idea. Because the first time I went in, and I'm a longtime fan of the gallery and customer, I wanted to buy more art <laughs> and the furniture it was near. Just the way well, the spaces it, and the way they both set off each other. It's like you're making the art look better and the furniture like it was, more inviting. It's it, magic. It was two weeks into room being open. A room being open in a capacity that we had lots of furniture. And and a couple from Milton who rents up here frequently, uh, they came into the gallery. They'd never been in the gallery before. And they just bought their they just bought a new place in Milton. And uh, and they saw the art and they're just like, oh my god. I have to have a piece by, it was John Leonard who they needed a piece by. Mm. Um, and so they were looking at this and looking at that and, and they were trying to, they had, a, they had a brick wall behind their bed and, and, and so John Leonard is just hanging on this drywall wall, this massive wall and their ceilings aren't as big. And so we were like, oh, we can't picture it in the room, we can't picture it in the room. So I took my shoes off, <laughs> grabbed the painting off the wall, put it, uh, brought it over to the room, put it over top of the bed, <laughs> so, they, the bed. <laughs> so, that, so that they could so that they could picture what it was, and and we and we mailed it to them. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, it's a it, it's a cool it's a cool way to actually view real art in real space. Yeah. Well, like Brian, we will talk about this a lot. You said serial entrepreneur, and sometimes mm -hmm. I think serial entrepreneur is the person that opens an interior design shop. And then they're going to open a pizza shop, <clears throat> and then they're going to open a marketing Ooh, pizza business. by Tim and Chris. Yeah, I will that. line up for that. But like, <laughs> entrepreneurship to me is just like kind of all over the place. You guys have this beautiful ecosystem that just makes sense. It's like the dominoes all are lined up, and one falls into the next one, and it's just you talk, you joke now, and like it's oh, almost we, like we had a plan. Man. And, no, I was going to say it's like <laughs> you joke that you don't have a plan, but. I don't know, maybe you did, and this is like part of your like characters, but like it's incredible that this has just come together this way because it makes perfect sense. Yeah, but the, the, one of the difficult parts for Tim and I is that we're both kind of cloud people in a way. Um, there's always there's always ideas and, and, and working off of those, but but we can also both sort of hammer down into the like how 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 can this play out um, and and what will work. And so yes, no, that was. It, the, it was always naturally intended to be to be this. Mm. Uh, yes, we're currently looking for I don't know a CEO or a business operations person <laughs> yeah, to, manager. To, to keep us organized <laughs> and, and 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 running properly. I do much better if someone told me what I need to do every day. Yeah, probably. Yeah. You guys don't have a system. I try. A really good virtual well, assistant. We have a, so we Tell have the, we design a little bit differently. Um, and, and do things a little bit differently. It's not this. This isn't. This isn't just Tim and I. Yeah. Um, it's 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 Tim and Chris, and it's Madeline, and it's Janice, and it's Evan, and it's Jocelyn, and it's Darcy, and it's Kevin, and it's Lindsay, and Cassie, and 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 and, and the people who fill in for them too. Mm -hmm. And when we design something, there's five people standing around this desk saying, uh, sometimes it's annoying. Uh, <laughs> But everyone has very different a, a very different opinion, yeah. and and we're all so comfortable with with where we are and how we work as a team that that sort of that that we we can hammer down to exactly what a specific client needs, mm. not not what we need, um, and we all come at it from different perspectives, and we bring a, a very holistic approach to it, um, and and style is determined by the client, so it's it's this really neat way of approaching it, yeah. yeah. How do you put ego aside? We just don't have it. Mm. Yeah, it just doesn't. It doesn't seem to exist, um, and it doesn't seem to just exist amongst anyone in our team. Um, we're all just kind of. We all just kind of want to do good work. Mm -hmm. Is is really what it comes down to. I think that's like the magic of not having. You're not trying to build the business to fit the plan. You're kind of embracing the creativity and seeing where it goes and. You end up creating better that way and setting the ego aside and yeah. well, we also, seeing what magic shows up. Yeah, we don't approach clients from a man, this is going to look so great in this magazine and here's how we need to design to get into it, right? It's not It's not about us. It's not about the magazine. It's about the client. It's about the person who has to live in this house and continue to love it for forever. It's not our style. It's the client's style. And we're versatile enough as, as individuals and as a team. That we can design. Not, not everything is a, a pale color. Um, it, it's like we, we, it, it really is just what it needs to be for a client. 
Oh, and we have we have the varying voices around the room too, right? If you want to design a you know a a a house for a couple that is on a lake with two dogs, like Chris and I are your guys, man. We know exactly <laughs> how that works. We know how that's going to work out. And then we have Janice, who's like, uh, no, Wait a as second. a mom, uh, <laughs> kid needs this and this and that. So you know, we bring we, we everybody brings their their pieces to uh, to those, and it's it's great because we make up for where each other where each other lack. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. No, we I, every day is fun. Like we we got it's not a chore to get up and go into work. It's not a chore. It's not a chore to uh, to do anything that we're doing. We're just we're doing it with good people and typically for good people um, and, and, and having fun doing it. But yeah, but our projects are, are getting, are getting really interesting. Yeah. And talking, P talking P about P Pinoy yeah, yeah. is it just, it, it, it will be a community hub. It will be, it will be something that it will be a landmark that, that will be the example of, 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 of what, of what buildings could and, and should look like maybe. Um, there's a project that I'd like to do that, uh, and we're just talking, just talking it through with a client, and and it could be lead certified, um, mm. and uh, just yeah, we're we're as as the area grows and as we grow, um, yeah, the, the the projects get more interesting. That's cool. I think that kind of wraps it up on the. F I love the thought of every day is fun. And the way you're approaching everything, I uh, can't wait for the podcast five years from now where we revisit this conversation and uh, <laughs> talk about all the intentional planned things <laughs> that you do from there. It's going to be so different. I'm going to reach out to you. You're not going to answer. Your assistant's going to get back to me instead. I think your assistant's going to reach out to my assistant. <laughs> 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 Fair. <laughs> yeah. Can all live in hope, boys. Yes. <laughs> no, but, but that's 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 the way growth's going here, right? You bring a good you bring a good idea, and you and you back it up with with good plans, and and and, and it works. Yeah, good plans would be agile, like you guys have done too. So yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. That's awesome. How do the people find you? What do you want them to do? Uh, they can go to uh, Home by Tim Chris on the internet, or Colborne Street Gallery, or uh, Room by Tim and Chris. It's Home by TC.ca or Room by TC.ca. Cool Glad door. somebody knows that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you actually do you have Home by Tim and Chris. We don't. Okay. But so if you I'm Google not. Home by Tim and Chris, you'll get us. Yes. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So okay. don't go there. Homebytc.ca, roombytc.ca. Nice. So go to Fenling, take yeah. a look at the art, sit yeah. on the chairs. You can't miss us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming. Um, we you know, would love to have you. If you're listening to this, you want to be on the podcast, love to have you on. Um, you can reach out to us at setitup at coorthasmallbusinesspodcast.ca.